Hey booktube, welcome to Jackie's Reading Corner. I am Jackie and I'm going to do a review of The Handmaid's Tale. So I just finished this like probably like a week ago, maybe less than that, I don't know, but um and I actually just remembered that I hadn't done a review for it since this of course is the month I will be doing individual reviews. So here's my review of The Handmaid's Tale. So this, my first thought when reading this book is that it, well, okay, rewind, um, this The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, it's a dystopian, one of the, it was, like, published way b back in the 80s, way before, like, Hunger Games and the Divergent series and all of that. So my first, like, as I was saying, my first thought when reading this is it reminds me a lot of 1984 in its storytelling. I mean, it's a very different story, in, but it has a 19, 1984 kind of feel to it. Like, very depressing and not the most exciting dystopian. It's, like, not, again, just like 1984, it's not like today's dystopians where there's you know, I mean, yes, there's a main female character who wants to stand up and fight back the, you know, the control. But she, but she's very passive. And it's not like, it's not even, it's not even like a science thing or a government thing, I think. I mean, there is a government, but I feel like it's more religion based. And like, basically, it's in a world where... It's like the not too distant future where basically the women are controlled and there are some, the women are divided into like the spouses of men, the wives of men, the, you know, women who have gotten married, the Marthas who are like the caretakers and the teachers. And I think, um, just okay, I'll have to go through it. But um like all the women have their one role. And our main character, of course, is is the um part of the group of women that they're not married yet, but they are basically breeders. They will have sex with the husband of some of a woman and get pregnant and then they will give the baby to the man's wife. And that's basically their their role in life. They're like they're just made to hold, be the vessel for a, for a baby. And our main character is of Fred, I think. I think that's how, I didn't know if it was off Fred or of Fred or of Fred. I mean, it's spelled like it's maybe of Fred. Um, like it's O F F R E D, like so, I don't know what that, um, I mean, maybe that's the name of, like, maybe Fred is the name of the commander or something. Um, or maybe her original name was Winifred. And maybe, like, they took, they shortened her original name or something and put of in front of it. Because all of the, all these women that are, like, the breeders, the vessels for the baby, are called of, whatever, of Glenn, of Fred, of, of Wren. You know, it's, so, I'm thinking of is, like, a surname or something, or, like, a code name. I don't know. But, um, it's definitely very interesting, and interesting story. And I definitely felt, you know, sympathy towards the characters, but I felt like I didn't get to know the characters that well to really have any attachment towards them. So, and I, like, even with, I mean, there were moments of where I was interested in, of, of Fred. I wish I knew how to say her name. But, um, this is why audiobooks probably would be really helpful. Because then you could hear how someone would pronounce the name. Granted, it might not be the correct, correct pronunciation, especially when it comes to, like, but I assume people that are audiobook, read audiobooks, like, record audiobooks, I should say, um, they get the correct the correct pronunciations or try to anyway, unless of course they're reading a really old book where the author is 
long dead. Like, a lot of the original classics. Not the modern classics, but, like, Charles Dickens' work or Jane Austen's work. It's, I mean, it was definitely an interesting story. You know, and I'm, de unfortunately, I am definitely more of a plot-driven reader, so I like more exciting things to happen. I mean, there were moments where I was scared for, of, of Red. I was, of Fred. I was definitely nervous for a time that she was going to get caught. Like, the commander, the guy that she's supposed to impregnate, he was, at one point he decides, and I don't know if this is because she wasn't getting pregnant, and maybe he was trying to keep her, maybe, like, he was trying to get her more into him, more aroused, I don't know, but he kept taking, like, he would give her things, like, female magazines that were previously originally taken away from them. Um, he would, he would, like, take, he even, he would give her things that she would ask for. about that guys I keep getting these random phone calls you know a lot of them are from Maryland where I originally came from where I was originally from it's just it's really annoying actually but anyway okay back to the review um what was I saying? oh he would give her things like he gave her this really kinky pretty outfit and he took her to the special club where all these women were there and, um, all dressed up and made up and stuff to be, you know, something that would entertain the guys. And it, it was really weird and disturbing. Of course, that's, I think that's the point. Like, this is all, this is the only thing that they had was this club. This is, like, it was the only freedom. See, I don't know where to look. I don't know, because when I, when I looked at my video... When I looked a little bit, it looked like I wasn't, like, the ca my camera's right here, but up above on the top screen, but it didn't, you know, so I figured I should be looking up at that. But when I look at my videos as they're, because when I upload them, I can, you know, I, the video is playing, and it doesn't, it doesn't look right. Like, it doesn't, like, it looks more norm. it feels more normal if I'm looking at the little, this little box right here. So, I don't know. I'm I'm still trying to figure all this out. Yes, I know after like two two years, two or three years, but anyway. And there now also part of the plot there's this there's a little subplot of this rebellious group which is the motivation for of Fred to you know thinking oh there's hope for us yet we can escape this totalitarian government I think that's the right word. Yes. And her friend that she keeps, that she keeps, that she brings up throughout the story, you know, that she's wondering what's going on with her, what happened to her, her name is Mora. And, like, she was a bit rebellious and went, was, knew what was, could, she could sense that all this was going to happen. She kind of knew it was coming. And she, and of, of friend, when the commander takes her to this club, he, she finds Mora there. She's one of the, she's one of the characters I actually like. I liked her, although there were times when I didn't always agree with her, her way of thinking. But I can understand why she thought the way she did, and I also I like she provides in interest. She was provides some interesting, and in, she was an interesting character, and. She was definitely more interesting than than our narrator, to, at least to me anyway. Which, it goes back to something I was thinking about the other day. How, like, there's people that like the, either the bad characters, the rebellious characters, the, the characters that are a little evil, or at least mean, or, you know. And then you, there's some people who like the complete opposite of the characters, so they're nice, they're heroic they're brave, and they're doing, they try to do the right thing, and they're, like, people, like, the good character or the bad character. I was just thinking about that because I was watching, um, I got Terry to watch Game of Thrones, and, or she finally, well, I, I guess I can't really say I got her to do it because she ended up 
I mean, I would talk about it, and I showed her season one of the show once, because that's the only season I have on DVD, and then she finally, a few months ago, she got the, um, the DVDs from a co-worker, and has been watching it, so she's up, she's on, like, she's, like, two seasons behind me, two or, or one season behind me, like, I'm on the last season, and she's on season six, I believe, so, she's seen things a little... course weird things are happen always like I either my phone either rings I get weird messages you know right when I'm filming a video or like I get called down from you know my parents or something it always happens when I'm filming but anyway um so like I said I didn't always agree with her but I did like her character she definitely provided some something interesting um and of course, the ending was a bit open-ended, and recently the author did publish a sequel. I don't know if she had that in mind or not, but she did publish one, so I'm kind of curious now that I read the book. If, like, with the sequel, but, I mean, it's after, like, sometime after, like, 15 years, I want to say, after the events of this first book. Um, I would say it was first, you know, um... It, the wife was a really frustrating character because she got blamed. It was like she was so angry and frustrated and so hurt, and but she had to keep it inside. So she took out her anger on of Fred, like it was off Fred or like it was her fault. And it feels like, of course, you blame the woman. You never blame the man. You never like it's never the man's fault, which unfortunately makes sense because a lot of t which unfortunately it makes sense that a woman would feel that way because like she wants to please the man he's her husband she loves him and so of course it's easier to blame the, the woman to blame the other woman the mistress but in this case it's not like a uh, Fred has a choice in the matter it's not like she's doing this on purpose I just you know I'm just gonna look here let's keep doing what I'm doing because I can't keep looking back and forth because then people are going to get, are not going to like that. <laughs> you guys are probably going to stop watching my videos. It's going to get annoying if I keep doing that. So I'm just going to look here. <sighs> so anyway. So it was just like, it makes sense, but then it's also incredibly frustrating. Because like, it's not, like I said, it's not her fault or narrator's fault. She, she doesn't have much of a choice. She has to, because this is the way society is, but it's easier for her, for the wife. I don't know if her name's Cora or not. I don't know if it's Cora or something or, um, but I mean, although I imagine it's probably frustrating because, you know, she basically has to wait on a friend to get pregnant. And, you know, and she's not, she can't be with her husband and be the one to provide the, as I like to call it, the vessel for the baby. It's only this woman. So, I guess, like I said, she feels like she, that's the only person she can take it out on is of Fred. She can, she can't take it out on her husband or the government because then she'll get in trouble. So, as frustrating as it is, I understand it. I understand why. What other choice does she have either? And there is, of course, there's the character, um, and I do, now, I do believe this is stream of consciousness. I'm not 100%. I think, I think it is from what I, when I looked it up on the internet, I think that's the, this writing style where it's, where the continuous characters, main characters' thoughts and feelings. So, but I'm not sure. So, I think sometimes I can, depending on the story, I can be into stream of consciousness and being cool with it. But, like, I mean, you know, like that for To the Lighthouse, I don't know. Maybe I was, I mean, maybe I just wasn't in the mood. Unfortunately, it's too late. I can't, I can't, um, like, I already got rid of the book. I already don't need the book. So, I mean, I guess I could get it from the library if I wanted to. But I wasn't, at the time, I wasn't, in, I don't know if I would still feel that way or if maybe I would be more interested, but it just, 
But with this one, if it's if it is stream of consciousness, then I was able to read this a little more easily. I mean, it could have also been that it was more modern. That was written in the twenties. And I, because I was also able to read um, Allie Smith's work, and I think she only writes the stream of consciousness. Like she, I haven't read all of her books, but I read um, Autumn, and I did attempt to read Winter, but then I lost interest in that plot. I mean, it's a, you know, she's a beautiful, prol prolific writer, but I just, like I said, I think I'm pretty sure I'm a pro plot. I'm a plot-driven reader. I want there to be an interesting plot. And the writing style took away, like, I because I was trying to understand what was going on as I was reading it, it took away from the plot, in the case of Ali Smith's work. While this one, I could follow the plot a little bit better. I mean, there were times when I was still confused, though. There were times when I was still trying to figure out what was going on, what the character was thinking, and what was going on with with of uh, Fred and everything. And my other I was gonna say something else. Um I can't remember what else I was gonna say. But this just wasn't the most interesting. I mean and this comes from a girl who mostly reads fantasy, so the plot wasn't that it just wasn't as engaging for me. I mean, I, the good news is because the, the chapters were short, mostly, um, I was able to get through it quickly. And I kind of wanted, and I did still want, I was engaged enough that I wanted to know what was going to happen to a friend and see if she was going to, if the if the rebels were going to, if these rebellious women were going to defeat the government. Of course, they didn't. <laughs> it's always like, I'm so, like, I know it's not realistic, for, you know, for to have happy endings. Like, it's more realistic to have open-end endings or endings where people, a lot of people that you like die. Like, especially in fantasy, but, you know, fantasy is a little more exciting throughout. I'm engaged throughout most of the book. Maybe the beginning is a little rough, but... Um... So, it... it but at the same time, I kind of want the, as I call it, the Disney-esque ending. The... The fairy tale ending. The you know, I mean, it's sometimes it, you need that because the world kind of sucks at times. It's not great. I mean, it's not terrible. It could be worse because I have a pretty good life. But there are times when you want something that's a little more happy and has a happy ending and has hope. You know, um, and you know for sure you you're guaranteed. Which I think is why some people, you know, might still like kids shows because they're simple and they're you're always guaranteed a happy ending. With kids shows. With kids stories. Like, I think that's why people feel nostalgia for their childhood favorites. Because, you know, you know, first of all, you know what the story's about, and you know it's going to end happy. It's going to end on a good, positive note. Well, of course, except with the assumption of fairy tales, which are a little darker than that, you know, but, you know, I think originally they were meant for adults or to be, like, warnings. Anyway, so it's it was good. I mean, I think I gave it, like, three stars, I want to say, on Goodreads. It was good, and I definitely, you know, it was definitely very interesting, a very interesting read. Not my favorite, obviously, but I'm glad I read it. And I'm trying to, yeah, I'm, I gave it to my mom to read, so, because she has been recommended the show. I don't remember by who. And she did say, you know, I asked her if she wanted to read it, and then she said, well, maybe if I read the book, I'll understand the show a little bit better. Because I understand where, because sometimes it's just easy to sit on the couch and watch a TV show. If you put on a TV show, then, you know, take the time to read read a book. And I know that's blasphemous, but, and I've said it a million times before, that it's just, sometimes it's just easier because you're not, you know, you can fast forward, you can rewind, you can... It's, it will go by faster, you know, and it gives you, you know, you don't have to put as much effort into your imagination, which I know is bad, I mean, because I think it's important to use your own imagination, but sometimes you just want to be lazy. You just want to, you just want to be lazy. 
So, and also there are times when, you know, the words on the page don't always make sense. So it's almost like you want to, like, especially with the older, like, with classics, sometimes it's just because there's so many words. It's just easier to watch, see someone as in someone who's already interpreted and already understands the, the text. And they can give you the visual to look at. But, so, yeah, I think my mom's going to, hopefully my mom will read it. Oh, and there's also, oh, there's also the aunts. That's the other character, the aunts. They're the ones, they're like the teachers for the women. They prepare them and prepare them for what men have expected them. And what they're, you know, and like, a friend has her aunt, Lydia. She seems like a, like a leadership type. And she, you know, and some of the things that she says, I'm, I'm very amused by being a woman of this time where we have a lot more, we have freedom and this a future like this has not come to pass, at least in the United States. I know that in other parts of the world, unfortunately, yeah, there are women that don't have as much freedom and we're very lucky in the United States and I, I think in Canada too. So, which is where I believe no matter, people, everyone says this is the U.S., but no, it's Canada. It's, uh, I remember the author saying Montreal, Canada. Um, and I know that Margaret Atwood, I, she's Canadian, and I, I'm trying to, I mean, I know there was at one point where Maura is trying to escape and she ends up going to, like, Maine or somewhere, but no, just because she goes to Maine, just because the character goes to Maine does not mean it's in the U.S., it's, it's in Canada. I am pretty sure, yes, I meant not 100%, but I am pretty sure I recall the, uh, it being stated this was set in Montreal, Canada, not the USA. Sorry, this is just when I, I'm a stubborn person, when I, you know. But, anyway. So that was, that was good. So I don't know if I'm going to get any more books finished by the end of the month. I would like to believe I could, but... You know, I'm bringing a lot of books at the same time, and then there's a new book I started the other night, and I just can't settle on a book, and it's like, oh, I want to read this one right, like, you know? And I'm, I've been also thinking, you know, and I keep thinking, okay, I need to get certain books done, like, for instance, you know, I've been waiting to read this one for a while, and... Um, this is the fi third and final book in the Shades of Magic trilogy, and I do believe the author, Dean Schwab, has a graphic novel that's talking, that's about, um, the king, King Maxim. So maybe that's what the other one was, where someone, I remember hearing that she was going to write a prequel series. So I thought it was going to be an actual book, a book book like this, but I think it's a graphic novel. So it's kind of a book, but it's a book with pictures and dialogue and stuff like that. A lot is going on, and I do have some theories, um, because something is, like, of what's happening and what it means for some people, for some characters, like, how some characters are not being affected by the bad thing that is taken over Red London. Oh my god, poor Holland. I love, I, even though Holland can be kind of, it's kind of an ass. You feel bad for him. I mean, there's a reason he's an ass. He's, the world has made him a prisoner. He's been a prisoner and a slave most of his life. And he's had to, he's been taught that the world sucks. And that you have to take what you want. You have to be, that that's the only way to survive. He doesn't have a lot of good influences in his life. And although he and Kel could actually be friends. And I think Kel would love that, would have loved that. But now I'm, I'm not so sure if Kel would have liked that. So, um, I keep wondering, do I need to put on these videos when I talk about this, um, that there are spoilers? I guess I do just to be on the safe side. I could do, um, what possible spoilers, like what someone would consider spoilers. Or, but anyway, um. What I should have done in the beginning of this video has been like, okay, I might spoil for, um, for, talk, if I talk about the other books I'm reading. And then the other one I think I need to work on, I need to focus on, is this one. Sarah Waters is the Little Stranger. 
Um, this is a story set in post-war England. And our main character, our narrator, is a Dr. Faraday, a middle-aged man. 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 I'm sorry, not man. Man. And he becomes the doctor to this rich family, this um, wealthy family. Is that Aris? Aris? Aries? I've been pronouncing it Aries when I'm reading it. And you have the uh, the the widow, her daughter, her older da her daughter Caroline, and her son who was in in the war, and he's going through depression, PSTD. He had he has wound he has a you know a leg that's messed up because of it. And of course, this is um this is after World War One, so I think close, I think it's after World War One. So it's like nineteen, probably nineteen twenties, unless it's from World War Two. But I'm thinking, going by the, you know, I'm pretty sure it's World War One. It just gives me what it's after World War One vibes. But anyway, and Doctor Faraday was trying to treat Roderick, that's the son, for his leg injury, and then Roderick starts. Eventually, he's like, he's been having to run and take care of the household because his dad is gone, so his dad is dead, so he's the one, he become, being the male, he's the one who has to take care of, and he's very bitter and resentful and very frustrating. He doesn't have his father's knack for working with finances. And then now, on top of that, he's starting to see things, weird things and feels like it's an infection on him and the house, and like he's you know, seeing these weird, these weird things, and it's really, and of course, Dr. Faraday being a man of science and logic, I mean, a doctor, he's like, you're hallucinating, so, as of right now, currently, Roderick is in the hospital, has been sent to the hospital, and it's just Carol, and, you know, it's mostly, and it's, Scrap is a ghost story in the back, so I don't know if it's... So what I'm wondering is this one, I'm guessing... This feels like it's one of... This is one of those books that... um From that books and things that talked about where, like, the kind of books where is it... Is there a ghost or isn't there? Is there a super... May, there may or may not be a supernatural force. And as I told her, as I put in the comments, I'm kind of the opposite of her where I want there to be something supernatural. And I'm disappointed often when it's not. I either want it to be something supernatural or just a regular historical fiction. Especially because they're basically telling Roderick that he's crazy. And I feel bad for the guy. And I, I want, I almost I don't want it to be proven that he's not just crazy. That there really is some supernatural force in the house. That there may be a, a demon or a ghost or something. And the fact that Betty, the, the one servant in the house, because they had to really, they had to get rid of most of their servants with the exception of Betty... The new, this new girl and Miss Baisley. I don't know if I'm saying it right, saying her name right. But either way, I'm still gonna. I would still probably when I finish it, even if it turns out there's no supernatural element and it really is, and it's like, psych, he's actually crazy. Um, I'll probably, I would probably still give it four stars just be because it's like it's a, it's a personal thing where I still enjoy the book. But I wish there had been a supernatural. Of course, I don't know. Maybe I'll get a nice little surprise and there really will be a ghost. Um, I also kind of... And again, I think I've said this before when I talked about this book last time on um, Monday. Monday or Tuesday. Or no, today is Tuesday. Um, Sunday night. Sunday or Monday night. When I talked about this, that... As, you know, I would like there to be, I kind of, you know, I predict that there's going to be something romantic between Dr. Faraday and Caroline. But maybe not, because, I mean, yeah, it's true that not all these stories have to have romance in them. But I would kind of like there to be, because I think that'd be really cute and really sweet and romantic. And also, it'll be kind of interesting to see that coming mixed up in all this drama with Roderick and their, him going be supposedly going crazy supposedly going crazy and that there might be some evil dark force but 
or like or it might just not be like it might just be Roderick hallucinating and imagining things. But anyway. So I'm really enjoying this. I'm really loving this book. I really love Sarah Waters' writing style. They're very, you know, it's really very descriptive and clear beautiful writing, you know, you can still understand and it's you know what's going on. You can and you can picture it really easily and you just get lost in the story. That's what I like. I wanna get lost when I'm reading it. Although sometimes I think it's part I pro it's partly because I don't always feel that even if I give a book, you know, even if I love a book because, you know, I'm reading so many other books I'm feeling, oh, I gotta focus on this other book now. So, and that's the love, though, I, A Conjuring Light I read when I was, this morning, because my mom hadn't come home yet, and then when she, when she was going to come home from her, from her meeting, then she was going to cook breakfast. So I took the time to sit outside on my front porch, because there's more sun there than the back porch, and read A Conjuring of Light. And then at the pool, I of course I run more to more than the no, more books than the one than the number of books I actually read while I was there. I read like only two books. Cause of course, my mom didn't want to stay there all day, and I I didn't want and I kind of didn't want to stay there all day because that would be kind of it'd be kind of boring after a while. I get a little restless. So and unfortunately, there are some chilly spots today. So it's like. It gets a little cool, and then the pool's not, we just, the pool's not heated. It's supposed to be heated, but then we found out, like, a year, that, my dad said that a year ago, the guy did not put the right, they, he didn't have the right part, and he has not come back to fix it, to put it in the right part so the pool could be heated. So, unfortunately, it's, like, freezing cold, which is a bit annoying, and you, we almost have to wait until, like, July, June or July, that you want, so we can use the pool. Like, comfortably, I should say. I mean, we can use it, but... To want to get in the freezing cold water when you know we have to wait until it's like sauntering hot. So I did get in the hot tub though, which was nice. Okay, and then I also continued with um. So I know I've already done video the last on Monday, Sunday night. I kind of did do a video like this, but first of all. I, to be fair, I reviewed a book in this video, and then, like, I'm in that video, I was also more talking about the books that I was gonna read. In this one, I'm just gonna talk about what books I did just read. So, but there are so many. Um, so, I also continued with The Lost Queen, and I got to chapter 12. We have our um, main characters, Lagoref, Lankoref, I don't know how to say her name, and Lalkin. I can't say the name, they're like Scottish or something. And their father has like, has said, has told them that they have to go to the kingdom of Partick because he has been, he decides he's one, he doesn't want to leave them alone in their, their fiefdom anymore, so he's gonna bring them to that little, that city where they're gonna meet King, um, Emrys Pendragon. Not Utha. But I'm wondering, my theory now is that because Lagorath, Langorath is supposed to, like, in the description, in the, the back, the flap, inside flap description says so she's gonna fall in love with a warrior, that works for a king, a warrior of the king, and I'm wondering if that's gonna be Utha, Utha Pendragon, Arthur's father. Like maybe she's gonna, she's gonna fall in love with him. Not sure though. Obviously not sure. I haven't got to that point, but I'm wondering. I can't remember how old she's supposed to be currently. I'm trying to look at. Oh. Oh, there is, oh, there's a pronunciation guide. That's a bum. I didn't think about that. I'll have to look, I'll, so I'll have to go over this pronunciation guide. Okay, 
which really should help. Lyocan and Langoras, Langoras, Morkin, Ari, Ahi, Ani, Broden, Cathan, Croan, King of uh, Gothview. Okay, yeah, that is that really. Yes, this really helps. I shouldn't have looked for this. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> so, but right now, like, there's, sadly, there was this little girl who lost her mother in, what is, how do you say it? How do you pronounce her name? Um, let me look up her name. guy, which I'm so glad is in there. I did not see this. Um, that was the people. This is not the, uh, there's the pronunciation guy. Okay. Um, Langoreth has, um, she's kind of taken in this girl as her servant and just protected her from, from Gawergi, Gawergi. He was the cousin, who's the cousin of her father's ward. He's kind of her, he becomes kind of, um, Langoreth and Lyokin's foster brother. Like, they, um, they took the king, his father's kingdom from him. Their, their father took his father's kingdom, their, his father's kingdom from him. So, I anyway, mean, I'm really enjoying this. And I like how it's written, like, I'm always apprehensive about medieval fiction. Because I'm not sure I'm, if I'm going to like it. But I'm definitely, I'm liking this one. I'm definitely interested. And it helps that it's written in the way it's written. Like it's written for me to that I can easily get into it. And see? This is what I mean. In my videos. I always get, there's always an interruption in my videos. Okay, so that's what I'm currently reading. I did start reading this one the other night. The Poison Wine Bible because I just had a desire to read it. And the family, okay, so this is basically about a Baptist family who the father is a preacher and he decides to uproot his family to Africa. And this is set in the 1950s. And we get multi perspective where we're with, we've so far we've gotten the perspective of, we're getting the perspective of each of the daughters. And this is their. There's a heavy contrast between how he celebrates, how they celebrate and preach religion and celebrate God compared to how people in Africa, how they celebrate God and he does not. And the, their father um, does not like it, does not like what he sees when he gets there and sees how they're celebrating God and religion. Like they're, you know... I'm trying to say this without sounding, I mean, of course, they're, like, they're a little too wild in his mind. They're, like, too spirited. And the kids, of course, are taken aback by this, and they're a little scared. And I don't know what's gonna happen, like, but people like this, you gotta stay away. <laughs> Characters like that are, that are crazy and just and controlling about religion. Like, I know this guy who just man that is like that that I know his ex that he's very much and he's such a hypocrite about it like he does things that he says are wrong and you shouldn't do them but it's okay for him to do it because he's a man you know so people like and people like that I don't like them but it's definitely make a very interesting story and I think I read in the description that but his family is going to actually like it, like, living here in Africa, but he's not going to like it anymore. Nathan Price, that's the guy's name. He's a fierce, evangelic, Baptist. He's, okay, so it's the last decade of the, of the 50s, so it's 1959. 
So it's almost the 60s. And he dates in the Belgian Congo. So I didn't, so I started reading this one. So that is my review of The Handmaid's Tale and my updating you guys on what I'm currently reading. So I would love to know what you guys are currently reading. Feel free to share in the comments below. Um, tell me what you just finished. If you just finished a book, I would love to know that as well. And if you like this video, be sure to give a thumbs up and I will figure out my eyeline at some point. I think I'm, I think I'm okay looking like this. So I'm, but maybe someone could tell, if someone tells me that no, I should be looking at the camera, then okay, I'll look at the camera. Um, so like I said, if you like this video, be sure to give a thumbs up and click subscribe if you have not. And as always, I hope you are enjoying your reading and I will talk to you later. All right, bye.